Hello, I'm Lux. And this is Ember. And this is our thoughts on Sailor Moon Crystal, episodes 17 and 18. Wow, the more I watch this show, the more I'm like, I'm liking this. I'm also getting kind of intrigued because there's stuff going on in the latest episode that is like background stuff. And it really tells you a lot about what's going on. I'm like, wow, this is interesting. So what were your thoughts on the first of the two episodes that we watched? To me, this one had a lot of deviation from the manga. Now, I said last time that we skipped over the part of Mamoru's underclassmen, you know, bumping into him and, you know, being told that he's going to get into the academy and then later seeing Mamoru heal himself. So the first thing that he sees is Mamoru and Usagi on a date and hears Luna talk. Hmm. Well, from an outside point of view, someone who actually hasn't read this part in the manga, I thought everything flowed pretty smoothly and I actually got a lot of feels from this episode because of the whole interaction between Sailor Jupiter and I didn't bother to retain his name, but there was an interaction between the two and I was feeling emotions about this and I was like, oh, this is nice and we're finding out more about Jupiter and a little bit about our past and that's cool and I really like that. Yeah, that part's really interesting. What bothers me about his interaction with Makoto is that he leaves the cafe feeling out of sorts and basically chases after Makoto. He just sees her turning around a corner. She doesn't see him. So he's unsettled and he's seeking her out, where in the manga, they're actually all at the same location and they're like, yeah, Makoto, you're really sick. Um, hey, underclassmen, go walk with her to the pharmacy. Oh yeah, I completely forgot about the whole illness thing that was going on. And I love how like there's moments where suddenly she's perfectly fine and then suddenly for plot reasons, she's feeling really sick again. I'm like, that's not how colds work. <laughs> Yes, it is. You're only sick when it matters to the plot. The rest of the time, you're perfectly healthy. <laughs> Especially when you do a transformation. That's actually one of the things I liked in Dragon Ball Z. Because Goku transformed in that one episode is when his heart condition kicked in because he was overexerting his body. That I give them credit for. But most shows are like, he's only sick because of this. And it's only important when the plot says so. <laughs> or when it's funny. Right. They did keep a lot of the interaction the same. The way her room looks, them having rose tea, the reports on the television, uh, the underclassmen confronting Makoto going, what is going on? Is like nobody human anymore? Except that in the manga, he's seen more than what he's seen in the anime, which gives him more to be questioning about. But the kiss is definitely cuter in the anime because it has extra sparkles. <laughs> Yeah, I, I really liked that episode overall. I, I like the interactions between Makoto and this other student. I, I like how everything, how the pacing felt in the episode to me. And since I didn't have anything to compare it with, I wasn't thinking about that. I was just thinking, okay, how does this feel structurally to me? Does this hold up? Are there any problems with the plot so far? And so far, I'm not feeling any real problems. There's probably some there if I look deeper. Overall, the pacing of stuff and plot felt really good to me. No, it did feel well executed. I'm just bringing up the comparisons between the two because I can, you know, and say, okay, what worked better for me and what didn't. For example, during the fight scene, when Moon and Venus are fighting the droids, they're actually fighting transformed droids, ones that look humanoid, and they're questioning if they're actually human going back to Amy's observation before she was taken. And Sailor Moon pulls out the Sailor V style glasses that we pretty much never see her wear in the anime and puts them on and can suddenly see them as droids, kind of like Amy's computer. And I like that the episode worked so that that wasn't necessary because the glasses aren't really something that get used in the anime and in the manga they seem to get incorporated off and on as some of it I think is a carryover from the original Sailor V manga. So, shall we move on to the next episode? 
Yes, on to episode 18, in which a Sailor Scout is not kidnapped. I was fully attentive throughout the entirety of this episode because there was a lot of information going on in this episode. A lot of things were being revealed, a lot of things were subtly hint hinted at. Uh, a little bit more backstory about the Dark Moon people was shown, like, uh, do we really trust this guy? Well, he seems to trust this guy, but he kind of came out of nowhere and just offered us this thing. Yeah, but then we could also use our Dark Crystal to destroy the Silver Crystal. Is that the point? Well, what are we actually doing? <laughs> there seemed that whole conversation about, even though the underlings completely trust this guy, they're still kind of questioning about where did this seer-like dude with the crystal ball come from? I swear at one point I'm going to unmask him. <laughs> yeah, and... That was very close to the manga and, you know, also revealing that Wiseman gave Prince Diamond his evil eye. So he shows up, he gives the leader of this little group extra powers, tells him about the legendary silver crystal, and lets him get a look at what apparently is the most beautiful girl in all of 30th century Tokyo. And then there's the whole um, summoning people from the other side, which I don't think she actually does, but... She makes it seem like she does, so it's a good way to distract your enemies and to console yourself about, oh, my, I believe, sisters, or at least sisters in action, are now gone. <laughs> well, she's gone too. Once again, Moon Princess Halation, I think is how she phrases it. And poof, bad guy gone. Oh wait, Venus is still here. Hey, they broke the cycle. <laughs> oh wait, now it's time to question Chibi Moon. Oh look, apparently this earring's kryptonite to her, and she freaks! <laughs> well, the last of the four Spectre sisters does actually channel, because she channels the spirits of her sisters using the droids as hosts when they're hiding on Nemesis. You know, when Ruby interrupts her with that little kiss on her shoulder going, Hi there, care to be the next one to die? <laughs> oh yeah, that scene. But the channeling done for the DVDs, nice upgrade from the channeling video in the manga, is definitely her just making stuff up because she has no reason to channel Ruby. It'd be kind of funny if she actually is channeling Ruby to pull that off, but you know, the voice isn't that far off. She could just deepen her voice and say that stuff because they all have the same agenda. I like how we're involving the background characters more again. You know, we had Naru and Unimo again. You know, we haven't needed him as a plot device in a while, so it was nice to see him again. And it's nice to see Sailor Moon's pre-Sailor Moon life friends still involved. And it's a very nice touch that Naru both understands that there's a part of Usagi's life that she just can't touch and that she still wants to be friends and cheer her up. So we have one background character there with Naru who is concerned for Sailor Moon. We have the leader of the UFO club who's concerned about Rei and we have the underclassman who's concerned about Jupiter. And because of their concern, they're all at the channeling session and oh so conveniently get picked to be the bodies to channel the three dead sisters. Very convenient of Black Moon to pick the three people who are actually friends with the Sailor Scouts out of the entire audience. Yeah, I really like the involvement of those background or side characters. It was nice to see them show up again, especially um, Sailor Moon's friend at school. I was like, oh, yeah, she had one of those. <laughs> it's kind of like... In some of the filler episodes in the first anime, there was even points where they were kind of hinting that maybe she's, maybe Sailor Moon's spending too much time with Tuxedo Mask and ignoring us, you know, kind of thing. And speaking of Tuxedo Mask, what was it? Something something smoke bomb? <laughs> <laughs> Tuxedo La Smoking Bomber. Ah, <laughs> I was like, that's a name on an attack there, and we did he get powers? <laughs> I mean, other than healing, he can actually attack with magic now? White Mage got some kick-ass powers now! <laughs> no, but that's one of the things, is his four knights, okay, technically four kings, keep telling him, believe in your power. And he's like, what power? Like, you have the power to read things with a touch and the power to heal. You have power, you have energy. Just learn to focus it differently. Wait, what's this mysterious voice telling me how to attack? This is awesome! <laughs> 
And it's also a very powerful attack because it was able to stop Rubios's flames. And, you know, he's a higher level bad guy, you know, since he's the commander of the Four Sisters. The one thing that was different with the public channeling session was in the anime it was held in the open. And I actually like that better than it being in a convention hall. It gives more room for us to maneuver. And the cameraman was a nice touch, actually giving Venus a reason that she couldn't transform. And yay, both main male characters got to rock at this episode. Artemis, you know, took out the cameraman and Tuxedo Mask not only hit Rubio's with a cane, he also used a magic attack. Yeah, that was so much better than the punch she gave Neflite, though that was quite satisfying. Also, wasn't he knocking out the camera because he was afraid the camera was transmitting to other people around um, whoever was watching it to hypnotize them too or whatever? Probably, but notice that Venus didn't transform until after Artemis took out the camera. Hmm. In the manga, we actually skip her transformation sequence. She's yelling out, don't be fooled, while she's already transformed. So, any more thoughts on this episode? Very much enjoyed it, and yay plot development and background information. I mean, I already know where the story's going. I've read the manga, but it's still interesting to um, be further along the path. Yeah, I really enjoyed this episode myself, and overall I like where it's going. I like that we got more information because I was like, ooh, like I said, I was fully attentive throughout this episode. I was like watching it, really enjoying it. I was like, oh, I like all the information we're getting. I'm intrigued. I want to know more. <laughs> Do you want to know more? Yes. You have to pay a dollar. Damn. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So overall, I like this episode, and I can't wait to see more. Well, you have to wait because they're not airing yet. And if you thought this had a lot of background, just wait until the next two episodes. You will learn so much. No spoilers, please. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> and this has been our thoughts on Sailor Moon Crystal episodes 17 and 18. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a friendly comment below and consider subscribing to our channel. Like Lux's art and would like to see more of it? You can find him on DeviantArt and Tumblr. Want to keep track of what's going on with this channel? You can follow us on Tumblr as well. Really like Lux's art and would like some of your own? He is currently open for commissions. Links in the description. Let me try that again. Hello, I'm Lux. And this is Ember. And this is our thoughts on. Sailor Moon Crystal, episodes... Damn it! <laughs> 17 and 18. You know, and it's a very sweet mm -hmm. touch that not... Just let me keep talking. I just and it's a very nice... <laughs> and it's a very nice...